So in the last video, we talked about the fact that ribozymes were probably the first self-replicating molecules to start off life, the original uh, molecules of life. But the ribozymes, which are basically RNA acting like an enzyme, need specific peptide cofactors in order to function. And it could just easily have found out such cofactors in the environment. However, any cell that had a mechanism to, to actually form these peptides on its own so that it did not need to find the right sequence already paired up in the environment would have a huge advantage over cells that had to go around finding and accidentally locating the chain that it needed. So you, there you have the pressure for the evolution of the genetic code. We also talked about in the other video that ribozymes can act as templates or enzymes to form these peptides. So it's ribozymes themselves which could add to formation of links between two amino acids and thus the formation of peptide bonds or those chains. But of course such systems would also create several other types of, of, of chains. So the non-specific synthesis of peptides would of course increase the concentration of the cofactors needed by the other ribozymes. But of course, unfortunately it would also create many unneeded poly peptides. So what you need now is the evolution of a system that will enhance the, effic the efficiency of this. It would increase the, the rate of formation of specific peptide cofactors or the cofactors needed for the functions necessary for the cell. So that means that thing that increased the formation of such specific cofactors would increase the fitness of these early cells and therefore be selected for. Um, one hypothesis for a mechanism that could do this involves a structural RNA that could hold the two ribozymes in charge of forming the peptide bonds together. Because once that structural RNA is holding those peptide bonds together, it can even then bring them even closer together, making sure then that the peptide chain is going to be formed more efficiently. Later on, additional ribozymes may have evolved to further facilitate the formation of the actual bond between the amino acids. And then with these additional um, the ribozymes taking over the row, the original ribozymes would now specialize for specific amino acids. And then the structural RNA would specialize to attach itself to specific adapters. And what you have there already is a three-component system that although functions a little bit different from the way the modern system works, it is much similar to the way the modern system is. All the components are already there. Let's look, think about it. The structural RNA that we talked about acts like the modern messenger RNA, which contains a template to connect to two specific uh, ribozymes bringing two specific amino acids into play. Now, of course, the, you could have specific sequences to allow the right uh, template structural RNA to connect to the right ribozymes so that the specific sequence would be connected. That is the precursor to the early codons of that we have today. So just like the structural RNA would be the precursor to today's modern RNA. Ribozymes carrying the appropriate amino acids as the precursor to the modern transfer RNA which is carrying the amino acids today. And those other ribozymes involved in further facilitating the formation of the bond could be the precursors to today's ribosomes which act as catalysts for the formation of peptide bonds. So there you have it. 